Hello everyone, I'm here today with Chris Appelhans. He's a writer and artist who has worked in the film industry for over 15 years. He worked on Oscar-nominated films such as Monster House, Coraline, The Princess and the Frog, and The Fantastic Mr. Fox. He was nominated for an Annie Award for his production design on Coraline and continues doing design work for studios such as Disney, DreamWorks, Sony, Warner Brothers, and many others across the animation and live action industry. As a writer, Chris has developed and sold original projects to Disney and Leica, and is currently directing his first film with Base FX, the Chinese animation studio behind Monster Hunt. Chris Appelhans is a graduate of Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California, and he also teaches at Art Center. Chris, welcome. Good to have you Thank here. Thank you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this field. What was what were the origins of your creative life? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I grew up in a a small town in Idaho, and so uh, growing up, I loved to draw. I loved to tell stories, uh, and I never really assumed that that was a career option. Mm -hmm. it didn't really occur to me that somebody had to make all those. Right. Um, and so it took me until high school before I really understood that that was a, a job, a major. And so I sought out Art Center and uh, and headed straight here, managed to get in, and um, got a great education in all the fundamental sort of design and drawing and concept ideas, and then jumped right into the industry, stayed out, you know, straight out of school. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a crazy ride ever since. Yeah, yeah. And so at Art Center you studied illustration? Uh-huh, yeah. What were some of the, uh, when you talk about the great skill sets that you got at Art Center, what, what more specifically does, did that education give you that helped you in your career? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think um, it's, it's one of the gifts you actually have if you just study illustration. Um, there's such a tradition going back, you know, a thousand years of, of trying to figure out how to make compelling images, mm -hmm. how to figure out uh, how to tell a story in a, in a single frame and then all the skills that go into the posing and the lighting and the composition. Um, and to be able to focus on that for just solely that skill for, you know, three, four years, mm -hmm. I think in a way it was kind of an advantage because those are the same principles that guide filmmaking, right. that guide storytelling in other mediums. And so you're kind of getting a really solid foundation in a skill set that translates across a lot of, a lot of mediums, right. you know. So how does it change when you go from the analog tools to the digital tools? Because you, you were here at Art Center in the late 90s, I think. Yeah. And that was right on the, in the transition yeah. into the, the software that our students use all the time now. Yeah, uh, well, it's a lot easier with digital. Yeah, I, bet. Um, I mean, it has its own challenges. Uh, there are certain things that come naturally to analog medium that are hard to recreate with mm -hmm. digital, the mm -hmm. accidents that happen, right. the textures. Um, but beyond that, I think uh, there's a immediacy to the digital technology, and it's very democratic. You know, you can mm. get a you can get a computer and a tablet. You're on board. You're mm. um, you're you're free to create and make mistakes and and learn really fast. Right. And you don't have to go and spend seven hundred dollars on oil paints every other right. term. <laughs> so democratic meaning it's more available to more people. Yeah. There's yeah. the possibility for someone with just a little starting point to really learn fast. Yeah, interesting. So when you've come back to Art Center to teach, what's the difference between the students that you're teaching and the students that you studied with when you were a student? I think the students now are, you know, they're accelerated to an amazing degree. The amount of knowledge that they can get from other students, mm -hmm. from online, you know, you have high school kids who are taking uh, remote study courses right. from the time that they're in, you know, 13, 14 years old. And at Art Center, I think one of the most profound things about the school is it puts you in the same room as another 22, 23 exceptionally mm -hmm. passionate, talented people. And so just by watching them and seeing, oh my God, look how good they are, how they yeah. do that, yeah. that teaches you so fast. And, and they're all kind of either right at your level or a little beyond you. Right. So you just start leveling up so fast. That, now you have students at Art Center who have not only that, but they also have the same thing online right. with the other best students around the world. And so they're just really good. <laughs> and it's a competitive place yes, too. Yes, very yeah. competitive. So you have all these changes in technology. What do you think are the key qualities or talent that 
is beyond technology, mm -hmm. what's, or b below technology? Mm -hmm. what, what's the through line here, yeah. regardless of what kind of medium or technology you're using? I mean, that's, I would say that's actually the most important thing about looking at the landscape as it changes, which is the technology changes, right. the medium changes, but those principles that you learn at, at Art Center from any great teacher that go back to the stuff that they were figuring out in the Renaissance, you right. know, right. design and composition and, and gesture and storytelling, those take a long time to master, you know, you're, you're going to get dip your toe in the water after three, four years. Right. And so there's, even though the technology makes things quicker and sharing is easier, the actual journey to become a really great artist is exactly as hard as it used to be. Yeah. And it always will be, and that's, that's the joy of it, I think. That makes sense. <laughs> um, so you worked with uh, some, some great teams on Monster House, Coraline, mm -hmm. Princess and the Frog, Fantastic Mr. Fox, really amazing projects. What's it like being part of the creative team? What's your role as the concept designer mm -hmm. or the production designer? Give us a sense of what a creative team looks like on some of these great films. Yeah, it's an interesting. It's a very... Uh, it really depends on the film, depends on the director, mm -hmm. depends on the, the studio environment that you're working in. I would say the best part about it is it's not a lot different than the sort of collaborative classroom environment mm. in the best case scenario. Right. So you have all these really talented people. Um, the project is being handed to you different parts of it to figure out, to solve, to design. You're sitting there amongst your peers, trying stuff, looking at what everyone's doing, putting it up on the mm -hmm. wall, mm -hmm. picking it apart. Uh, it's not a lot different than, um, you know, the best class you ever took. Right. Um, the exciting thing about it is then what what happens beyond the work that you're doing is all these designs, these drawings, these characters are going out into the production process and getting made, and mm -hmm. they come to life, and mm -hmm. so three, four, six months later, the sketches of a character that you saw, he's there walking around on screen and talking and right. jumping around in a virtual environment, uh, or in the case of like a stop motion right. movie, they had you know sets the size of a football field that are just a recreation of your concept painting with the character that has to walk through there. Right. And that's really cool. That's yeah. That whole execution stage is something you kind of dream about in school. Like, yeah, I would do this, and right. it would look like and this. You actually see it. Then you see it, and you're like, oh, okay, this is addictive. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like the first time you hear an actor speak the words that you wrote. Yes, that, exactly. I mean, they're, they're just yes. words on paper, and then all of a sudden they come to life. Yeah. So you've worked with a lot of directors. Uh, our friends in China often ask how the director impacts the creative team. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the dynamic between a good director, or maybe not a good director, mm -hmm in the worst case, and those of you that are creating the visual look and feel of it. Yeah. Moment. You know, it's interesting. I think animation and live action have different, it's the same skill set, but slightly different. Um, one's a marathon and one's a sprint, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think for directors, the best directors that I've worked with have an interesting combination. They have incredible certainty of their vision, right? They mm -hmm. know the movie they want to make, they know what it's about, they know how it should feel, they know who the characters are. Mm -hmm. And they also have an incredible willingness to let the crew and the team explore that and find stuff that they could never dream up and, and make what their vision was even better. Mm -hmm. So you can err in both directions. I've worked with directors who were letting everyone explore but never knew what they wanted to do, so mm -hmm. then everything just drifts in right. a million directions. Right. And then you have other directors, I think this is a little bit more the, the attitude I've seen from working with people in China, is the director should be a dictator mm -hmm. and should just be ordering everyone around and, and he's the guy with the vision and no one else could possibly have anything to offer. And I've worked with people like that, it doesn't end well because right. it's, you need too many talented people to contribute all of their talents to capture something on, on that magic frame mm -hmm. for however long. Mm -hmm. And if those people aren't um, invested and if they aren't able to contribute with enthusiasm, then it's really hard to get something right. Good. So, so it's, it's really balancing it, yeah, yeah, between uh, your own vision and allowing for and supporting yeah. and feeding the vision of your of your uh, creative team. Have you ever uh, had an idea or a vision um, that you had to persuade the director to believe in? 
was there ever kind of a little little tension when you thought you had it right and, mm. and he or she didn't didn't quite get it? You know, it's probably the best thing about being a having a visual skill set, mm -hmm. uh, and that extends beyond concept art to storyboarding, mm -hmm. even to writing. Um, the better your skill set is there, the less persuading you have to do mm -hmm. by talking, right. and the more you say, okay, come back tomorrow and let me just show you this mm -hmm. painting, mm -hmm. and then you can decide. And then you usually can win those. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if, and and the, the point is, I think, uh, in the production, your job is to help the director, mm -hmm. you to inspire him, also give him what he wants, give him more than what he wants, but also I think you're trying to make something that for the rest of production, which in live action, you know, goes for months and in animation, years, that people want to put up on their wall when they're in, down in the workshop mm -hmm. building the sets or mm -hmm. off in the lab and be inspired by and be like, God, I want to make what our movie have this feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's, if you can do that, I think that makes you invaluable because that's, that's the kind of, it goes beyond concept art to becoming inspiration for the production and that's the best stuff for sure. Yeah. Let's go back to China for just a second. Yeah. Uh, so you're working with Base FX. They're a Chinese animation studio. Um, tell us a little bit about that project. This mm -hmm. is what you're doing right now, so yeah, to speak, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Yeah, they just announced it, so I think I'm allowed to say okay. things. Uh, <laughs> Breaking news right here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a first animated feature uh, set in contemporary China. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing a, a retelling of the uh, Aladdin story, mm -hmm. but... Um, done in modern day Shanghai mm -hmm. um, with a, a kind of amazing magical dragon creature who grants wishes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's a really exciting opportunity. The thing that I'm really excited about is to introduce uh, the Chinese audience to a stylized, designed, sort of beautiful version of, of their world, the modern world, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is an amazing, crazy place, mm -hmm. but also to introduce the world to contemporary China in a stylized, interesting, emotional film, you know. Right. I think it's something that uh, the appetite is there. People are fascinated by China and the way it's presented in the media is pretty one-dimensional. Right. And then you go there and you meet the people and there's so many smart people and so many wonderful people and there's so much more under the surface uh, and I think the opportunity to tell a story that can bring that kind of hopefully one that the audience in China really relates to and yet one that uh, the rest of the world can meet for the first time. That's that's kind of our dream. Um, yeah, so this this is a film for the world. This yeah. is not just the Chinese market. No. And, um, I know that we, we read about how fast the Chinese film industry and animation industry is growing. So we're very close now for, to China, for China to become a major exporter oh, yeah. of, of this kind of uh, creative work. Yeah. It's amazing. And you're directing this film? Mm -hmm. And what other, were you the writer as well? Or yeah, you yeah, I, it's I, fascinating. I wrote it, uh, but I, the, the important thing for me was I really wanted to develop the story with base because they were, we had a lot of offers from studios in America and it was very, it was flattering, but mm -hmm. there was no way I was going to be able to, to write an authentic story working just with people here. Right. So we got to work with a really great team of people in base who are born and raised grew up in China, have lived that generation's experience. Mm -hmm. They can tell me when my story isn't working or when it doesn't feel authentic. Mm -hmm. um, they can tell me, you know, one of the funniest stories from it is we have a scene where the main character has a, has a conversation with his mom about his future. Mm -hmm. And the way I wrote it, I was like, I'm trying to capture the way that like a, an Asian parent would be, which is not very, they're not like all nice and hugging, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like, it's more stern. Right. And I thought, okay, I think I did a good job. And I sent it over to them and they, they read it and they're like, hmm, it's a good scene, but why is his mom being so nice to him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's so many interesting cultural gaps. Yeah. And the reality is under the cultural gap, that mom loves her kid just as much as any other mom. Just, just different a way different of showing way it. way of showing it. Right. And I think those are the things that are fascinating, they're funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think they're funny in both directions. Mm -hmm. So getting to work with base and getting to develop a story with with their guidance mm -hmm. really was the the best 
best opportunity. It's amazing. You must you must have learned a lot already. Oh Still my gosh. are. <laughs> but I just love the idea that this is this is truly a a partnership between different cultures. Yeah. I mean, in, and in that sense, could be a terrific sort of global uh, production. Yeah, and I think that's the the best thing about art is it's something I learned teaching and traveling and teaching uh, is it just a, it's kind of its own language. Mm -hmm. So I meet with I meet with the artists in. Uh, at base, and there, they might be a painter or, or a modeler or a concept artist there, and I'm talking about what I want. We don't speak the same language, mm -hmm. so we have a translator. But I can go paint it. I can go point at my favorite paintings that were done by Chinese artists. Mm -hmm. There's amazing tradition of Chinese painters. Mm -hmm. Talk about the style, the look, whatever. Mm -hmm. And of course, their eyes light up because they studied those guys, and we right. all have we're fans of the same old guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's like I feel like I know those people suddenly so much better, right. despite still speaking none of the same language. So the visual language really transcends yeah. a lot of cultural differences, yeah. linguistic differences. What kind of films do you think China's going to produce that will have international appeal? Will it be science fiction, and visually oriented films rather than maybe a romantic comedy? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I think it's a really... I think it's a the Wild West right now mm -hmm. in terms of there's a lot of money and a lot of exploration of that market. Um, I think that the that Hollywood has been practicing how to tell a story for now I don't know a hundred years, mm -hmm. and before that like a playwriting tradition a thousand years. Right. So they have uh, it doesn't always show <laughs> in the <laughs> movies that they make, but they have a lot of experience connecting a story with an audience. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that, for the film industry in China, they're still really at the beginning stages of that. And they would, you would talk to them and they'll admit it. Yeah. Um, and I think that that'll accelerate very quickly. And you can see even in the proliferation of uh, Korean dramas, which are kind of like Korean soap operas, but they're so well done and they're so funny and they're so sweet mm -hmm. that they have a crazy following in China. And right, now, right. they have a crazy following here, like there's tons of young American college-age girls who are obsessed with them, and they're mm -hmm. obsessed with the movie stars and obsessed with mm -hmm. the, the cute guys. And so I think it's a matter of a decade or so. Right. Um, and and, and that, the good thing is that it doesn't matter. A good story could be science fiction. It could sure. be romantic. Right. It could be any genre. Um, but I think for their stories to travel outward, they will have to be really at a high level. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, that's a good transition to what you'll be doing this summer in July mm -hmm. in Beijing. I assume that visual storytelling will be a big part of the workshop that you're doing yeah. for two weeks, but tell us more about uh, what you're going to do in that workshop mm -hmm. and maybe talk about what the participants will gain from, from being sure. in the workshop. Yeah, I mean the biggest thing that I noticed when I was working with BASE was they're trying to develop a slate. You know, they have a couple movies now animated movies and development and live action movies. And they would call me every few weeks and say, we can't find any good projects. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not, there's not well written stuff, there's not interesting ideas, it's all kind of the same thing. Or it's interesting but it's just not presented well. Right. And uh, you know, they have a lot of financing and, and the demand really outstrips the supply right now when mm -hmm. it comes to creative ideas. Right. IPs that could make a great film or a game or whatever. So for me the workshop's about finding students who have some beginning visual education mm -hmm. or good illustrators or, or good painters or good storytellers and giving them some of the fundamental skill sets for how to develop a good story, how to combine that story with really great imagery because mm -hmm. you kind of need both to be compelling and then to put together a package that you can take around to studios and present your idea and hmm. present, um, present a potential project in a way that's really attractive. Right, so you're really going to get them in a short period of time to having a portfolio piece, if yeah. you will, that they that might actually lead to a project. Yeah. That's and great. And it's, it's, a, it's about the portfolio piece and it's also about really what is that little process it takes to build something good that will, you're trying to just hook somebody, you're trying to make them interested, right? And um, that's a process that even if they're just learning it over these two weeks, um, you repeat that over and over and over and you get better at it every time. And you get, I think, more skillful at 
thinking of original ideas and finding a way to, to hook an audience into them and, and a way into that story that would make an audience really want to see the movie. Mm -hmm. And by extension, a studio want to make it. <laughs> right. So last question again on the, on the workshop this summer. Uh, we know the film, film industry in China is growing so fast, so what kind of opportunities do the young filmmakers have in China? Is this, mm -hmm. a, is this a place where you want to, an industry you want to go into at this point? Yeah, I mean, the, I, I would say even, and I could talk right to the students, um, we are, at, even at base, we are searching always for uh, young Chinese talent that has the visual skill set, maybe an understanding now of stylization and mm -hmm. animation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a particular role in production called the story artist in animation. That's like a storyboarding artist. But you, you do so much more. You draw the characters. You act. You, I'm sure people have seen the videos on YouTube or right. wherever of, of the process. And we've been looking for a really talented story artist from mainland China for the whole length of our we're nine months into the project. Mm -hmm. I just can't find that person. We know that somewhere there's some out there, but right. the demand for these skills uh, is it's just, we're searching everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. And, and it will come pretty quickly, um, but right now there's just a little disconnect between what traditionally has been taught to art students there, mm -hmm. and design students, and what the industry is looking for. And that's kind of what I'm hoping to bridge that gap a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think at the workshop in July, you'll have a chance to meet some really talented young yeah. uh, artists and designers in China. So that's another yeah. great benefit for you in doing the workshop. Yeah, maybe I can hire some of them. Yeah, <laughs> terrific. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.